episode 20 of building my first model railway and to my YouTube channel, uh, Chapel Station. Firstly, a big thank you to everyone who subscribed recently. Um, episode 18, where I did the auction find, um, has proved really popular and uh, brought me lots of new subscribers. So uh, that's been really good. And so welcome everyone. And, uh, and thank you to everyone who subscribed ever since I started doing this. I can't believe I'm on, on episode 20 already. Uh, so in this episode, I do get back to doing some work on the model railway, as I promised, uh, and I start the industrial area. Um, didn't make as much progress uh, as I wanted to, so I'm certainly going to, the industrial area, I'm going to break down into a number of uh, different um, parts, uh, so I can develop that, and it's not too long a video. So in this episode, I get to do a lot of the groundwork, a lot of the um, ballasting of the track, of weathering the track. I have a few issues with some points in that area as well that I'm trying to sort out. Uh, and building the embankment up as well. So, um, so yeah, a lot of sort of the, the, the groundwork parts um, before I can get onto the fun stuff of doing all the buildings and all the detail. Uh, so hopefully you're, you'll find this episode uh, interesting and useful. Uh, thanks very much for everyone who has subscribed and who's watching. And uh, I'll now hand over to myself and, uh, and hopefully uh, uh, you'll enjoy this video. So it's time to get back to my good yard area and what's gonna be my gas works. So I think as I mentioned before, I've certainly learnt the lesson that better to start at the back and work forward, otherwise you're leaning over work you've already done. So I think before I can really get on this area, I just need to get this area finished. So what that's going to need is uh, the track's going to need some weathering, which I'll do by brush. You've seen me do that previously, because um, I don't have an airbrush, so I'll just do, uh, I'll do it using a hand brush. Um, and then ballast it all. I think I still need to seal up. If I just look over there, there's a few gaps here that I'm gonna to need to seal before I ballast, otherwise the water's gonna get down there and wreck all my arches. So yeah, I just need to seal that, weather the tracks, and then it's time to do all the ballasting. Uh, then I can then do, start the work on the air in front. Uh, you can see there, I had a suggestion, uh, which is a really good idea from um, one of my subscribers, uh, Phil Stokes. Uh, so thanks very much for that, Phil. Um, his suggestion was, as opposed to just having a dead end on the, uh, this siding here, which will go into the gas works, do a run around loop so you can shunt in and then obviously get back out um, on this line and then back round and either run round or, or back out. So, and actually just by luck, um, I have got a section, just a small straight section there, which uh, this points I had spare will just fit over and then I've got a third radius curve that I'm going to cut and then a small piece there and that should all, let's move that away a bit, that should all line up quite nicely there. A bit of a, a bit of adjustment. So I reckon that will fit in there perfectly. So I'll do that and then put the cork underlay. Now I've got uh, more cork, I can do the underlay under it all as well. And then that'll give me a chance to ballast and weather all this bit here as well. And then I've already got the models for the gas holder um, and a small tanker area that's going to go here. And then I've got the office block, which will go here on order as well. So yeah, lots to do, but I've uh, got to get the boring stuff done first, unfortunately. So I'll crack on that and uh, show you how I get on. Okay, so to weather the track, I'm going to do the same as before. I've got these ammo paint set that I got. Uh, I'm going to use this one um, which is rust racks and I use that one for the actual sleepers and then uh, the medium rust which is more ready I'll use just to highlight the, sort of the bolts and the um, rail ties I think they're called that hold the actual you know these pieces here that, um, that hold the rail so I'll just go along there and highlight those. Um, so yeah that's the aim so it's a bit uh, Methodical this with a little brush and I'll crack on with it and uh, to get it done. Okay, so as you can see, I've put these points in now on this extra bit of track. 
to create the run round loop there. So as opposed to just a dead end, they can come in and then uncouple and then go and then shunt round, which uh, was a great idea. And I've also extended this a little bit. It was just for a loco, but you can see now I can actually get a small few wagons in there as well. So I make the most of the space. Um, and I put the cork down and sort of secured it all as well. So that's all pretty good. Let me uh, show you it uh, in action. I've got a little shunt engine and that a few tankers of weight in there. So I'll bring them in, hopefully. And then it's uncoupled. Take it up to there. Switch the points here oh, and here. Drop the controller and then hopefully. See, it works a treat. So that's the tracks all weathered. And as you can see now, I've um, done the edges near the wall. So the walls have actually been sprayed with this, um, this just matte varnish anyway, to try and protect them. And because I didn't want water running down the gaps here and here, I've sealed it all. And then a bit like when you um, ballast points, I've then put PVA down and then stuck some ballast on to the PVA as well to help seal it even further. So hopefully now when I ballast all the rest of the tracks and flood it with the um, PVA and water mixture, it won't all run down and damage all my scousings, paper and card balling, fingers crossed. So yeah, so the next stage now is just to ballast it all in the, in the usual way. Um, and then probably put a, some a bit of greenery down as well. Uh, between the tracks and then that's really the, the back edge done now i can move on to uh, the more fun bit which is doing the same at the front and then i can then actually start building the actual bridge yard as well so yeah so far so good so uh, let's go on to the next stage So that's all my ballast now dry. Um, luckily, it's been a bit warm the last few days, so it's uh, helped dry the ballast pretty quickly. Um, as you can see, I've added a bit more grass. I did some, you might have seen on the clip there, I did some whilst the PVA was still wet. Uh, and then uh, I've added a bit more afterwards. I've done a couple little trees. You can see one there just to blend into that back scene a bit. Uh, there's another one there. That one's actually better. And then so on some of the columns and that, I also put a bit of greenery growing up the walls. And then particularly this bit here, that bit which is wider, I've added a bit more grass and greenery and bits and bobs as well. And then I've just given the track a rub down. I didn't video it, but I've just given the track a rub down with a good old Pico track rubber, just to clean it all up. Um, 
So, and now it's just time to do a little test run with my train to make sure it, uh, it all goes okay. So I'll just capture that for you and then it'll be on to the next bit. So you're pleased with that, it's all running nice and smoothly. So next job is to do exactly the same with all of uh, the Goodchild area. And then that allow me to then start actually putting all the structures in as well on the buildings. So um, I won't film me doing exactly the same again, but it's a case of weathering the tracks um, and then ballasting and gluing all the ballast down. And again, I'll probably just try and protect a little bit on the paper there because I don't want the PVA to suck up into that paper. So I'll put a bit more varnish and maybe a little bit of sealant along the bottom edge so you won't see it because it'll be covered with ballast anyway. Um, but it'll just to protect that a bit because if, when you flood it, the PVA and water mixture, um, I don't want to soak into all the cardboard and distort it all. Um, but it, it worked really well up there. There's no real no distortion or notice at all. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, all the way along, it's gone really well. So yeah, fingers crossed this bit will go equally as well. So I'll show you it when it's finished and then we can get on with the fun bit. Okay, so I didn't bother filming it as I said uh, earlier, because uh, you see me do the, the first bit, the upper level, but I've now ballasted all this lower level, which is gonna be sort of my industrial area, my gas works area. Uh, it's pretty much dry now, it's not completely dry, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, you can see that uh, I've actually made the ballast slightly different colours for different areas. So this this area in front where it's going to be sort of the loco storage main in, and gas unloading and the run around loop there. I've actually um, done it a lot darker ballast. And then I've weathered, on, uh, not weathered, but I've um, added a lot of vegetation as well. Some flowers, um, some bushes some grass all the way along as well so i think that looks quite effective uh, and the same on the um, retaining wall back there i've also you can see i've done some put some bushes up and some greenery as well just climbing up and on the edges helps cover some of the joins as well but uh, i think it just makes it look realistic you know these these types of walls you do see that growing up on the railways um, getting covered in vegetation and the same in the archways there I'll put quite a bit of vegetation and earth and that in there and then around here on that edge again up and up a little bush growing up there the scariest part um, of ballasting was the actual points you can see there which I've ballasted um, and they are still working fortunately but uh, trying to get the ballast in and I've, I've sort of followed the technique that people say which is Everywhere else I flood, but this area I actually painted with the brush in and then put the, the ballast in, but it still sort of gets jammed up and the PVA still goes everywhere. So it's, uh, quite, it's quite scary when you do that bit. Um, so that's all done now. I've still got to do this end and, and I haven't done this end yet because uh, there's so many <laughs> sets of points and the point motors um, and I've got the level changes. You can see there that if I go down, it does come up slightly and then joins the main line. Um, and I had a bit of an issue the other day. I was doing a bit of shunting, just checking the, the, the line, the um, tracks before I ballasted. And with this loco here, and um, one of these uh, grain, grain wagons, I think, for, for alcohol, but one of these whiskey grain wagons, um, decided to derail and fell off the side and hit the floor uh, down there. Uh, luckily, the top fell off and a uh, a coupling fell off, but it didn't actually break completely, so I just put it back together. But it did show the vulnerability of having this so close here, and particularly with this area being a, a little bit iffy for derailing. So what I think I'm gonna do is build out a bit of a bank here, um, so that if it does derail, it can't just fall off the edge. Obviously, eventually I'm gonna have the tunnel there anyway, so that will stop it. Um, but I'm gonna do something similar to, I did around this side with this edge in. 
sorry for the camera movements, but yeah, with that edge in there, I'm gonna try and replicate that and have a, just like an embankment. Um, coming round just to retain it. And also it will be a nice, um, it will work quite nicely coming out of the tunnel into an embankment and then opening out into the actual gas works area. So I'm gonna to have to connect a bit of wood onto there and then put the edging on and then um, and then I might actually ballast all this as well while I'm here now, get that done. And then I can then get on with the, uh, the structures and that for this area as well. So making progress, but uh, like everything, always takes longer than, uh, than you hope. So I used a cardboard template to um, to make and make sure it fits in, then cut it onto, onto a bit of wood. I had a spare bit of um, ply, it's the same ply that I've used for the actual layout itself. So that will now fit in quite nicely there. I need to fix and glue that in position. Um, and then I can then um, build up the bank for it and then I'm sort of ready to uh, start ballasting it on. So as you can see, I made quite a bit of progress today. I've actually got the board all fixed in place there. You can see to extend it out. And that's given me room to start building up the embankment. I put the um, piece of cardboard edging on all the way along there, which is the same as the uh, over the other side. So once that's sealed and painted and that it goes quite hard and that, that's fine. It doesn't really carry any weight or anything. And then I started to build up the embankment, as you can see. Starting all the way back here, and then I've built it up just using some packaging foam, and then I'll use some filler uh, on top of that. And it goes up to what's going to be the tunnel mouth, and that's exactly where I want the tunnel mouth. I just have to leave enough room for the motors and that, and a bit of ballasting. So I'll probably make this a bit up like there uh, over in the chapel station area. I'll probably make a lot of this as rock face because it wouldn't be that steep. Um, it's just an embankment, so some rock face, but with some grassy bits as well. Uh, and that sort of hides that, if I come back a bit, you'll see, sort of hides that quite nicely, that, that will be going into the tunnel. And then I'll have a hillside sweeping down, over the tunnel, down into the valley, eventually with the river down there. So all this area will be filled in there. And that will run quite nicely into that, and it sort of just partially hides the locomotives as well, so coming in and out of the tunnel, so, you know, sort of a scenic break, I think is what they call it. Um, so yeah, so just gotta wait for that to dry and then I can put the filler on it uh, and finish it all off nicely and then I can ballast this last area here and then I can then get on with the gasworks area. So pretty good progress today. So I wasn't planning on giving you an update yet because not a great deal has changed yet, but um, I've had an interesting um, and frustrating morning with my points and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but just to give you a little update of what I've been doing. So um, I've started to fill the foam that I put down. So this is all glued and dried now. And then I've cut another little piece, this piece you just saw there, to go on the um, back side here up to the tunnel. Uh, and then I started filling it, uh, and I've just been using this quick drying poly filler, um, which is uh, probably not the cheapest way of doing it, but it's really convenient and easy. Um, so that's done, and I've run out of that now, so I need to get some more. But in the meantime, I thought what I'll do is, um, before I start fixing everything in place, I need to really just go through these points, get them all level, get them fixed, um, get all the point motors fixed, and ready to ballast uh, before I box it all in. So um, I started doing that this morning and all was going well until I then found out there's no power whatsoever to this area. So I'm just gonna put the camera down and I'll show you what I've been doing and what I've discovered, I suppose. Uh, hopefully you can see from that. So I've got a uh, little electrical tester, um, one of these. Uh, I have no idea really how to use most of it, but the two things that do come in handy are just the voltage, because that just shows me whether there's power in the track, um, and this bottom one, which is uh, that one there, I don't even know what the sign is, but it's a continuity tester, and that lets me know whether actually the power's flowing through the track. So I can see that the power's flowing through the track. So yeah, so what I've discovered is there's no power at all into this branch line here. Uh, and when I run this little locomotive that, to the R8 that I had, 
uh, it dies completely. So I'll just push him up there. And we'll, so you can see now I've got the power on. Just So he's running fine now. And then it comes over this point and it stops dead. So I figured there's definitely a problem obviously with that point. So I started off by um, trying the continuity test up. I don't know if you can see that. Um, now, if I just go along the track and do the main line track, it should along. Yeah, so you can see there's power through there. Same on this one. And we go on the point blade itself. We go from one point blade to there. Now earlier that wasn't giving me a reading, but that is now. So I then thought well, that should work because I've got power running from there to there and I've got power running from there to there. So in theory, uh, it should work. So I don't quite know, so I'm not, I say I'm stepping in on expert why then that dies. So the other thing I tried is putting it to the voltage reading bit and just seeing what voltage it's reading across. So yeah, it's reading four, five, six volts. And when I come down here on the blades, again, six volts. When I come down to there, nothing. So what I don't quite understand is there seems to be continuity, seems to be shown there is a flow, but there's no power getting across there. Um, so my next trick I thought I'd try is just to see if I'd bridge it, if it will then give me power. So what I thought I'd do is I'd put here the locomotive down here. You can just see him in the shot there. Um, I know there's power on there, so if I've got a bit of row and try to bridge across there and see if actually it moves. I'll come the other way. And it does. So, from a process of deduction, I can work out there's definitely a connection problem with that blade and that made that connector there. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do next. The trouble is all these, they do, there's quite a lot of movement on them all, which is the whole point of trying to fix them all in place before I ballast uh, and pack them and try and get them level. Um, okay, so um, yeah, what I was saying is moving it didn't do it, but I've just noticed if I just press this rail down here, this connecting rail between the the blade that moves and the fix and the actual isolating point. I press it down. It works. I let go. So it's definitely something to do with the twist in motion, perhaps. Or that, or that is just not contacting that metal piece. Maybe it's moved. I don't know. I'll have to have a look at another set of points. I get a spare set here. Maybe someone could comment if they do know. But clearly there's uh, that connection there. Uh, but points I've discovered in my very few months of rod model railway, points are the bane of everyone's lives really. Um, as soon as you, everything runs fine until you put points in and then you start to get issues. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully I'll get it fixed and, uh, and I'll give you an update shortly. So the good news, as you've just seen, is that the uh, points are fixed and probably the most challenging to navigate is this tube train and it gets over fine. But I'm a little bit nervous about ballasting it or fixing it in at the moment. So um, I might leave that for now. It's all working, happy with it and then uh, and Get on with the good yard, I think, uh, and uh, worry about this for another day. So it has been a frustrating few days with the, the track playing up and the points and that, um, having got all this ballasted and that. Uh, I have 
filled this side in now as well. So this is all hard uh, and ready for a bit of paint. Um, but I think uh, this will be long enough for this episode. Uh, I think I'll split this, um, doing this gas works into a number of different episodes, um, just so that you can see the development, otherwise it'll be too long. Uh, and I think I just need to run some trains and uh, just to chill and uh, enjoy the railway for a little while. That's what happens when it gets a bit frustrating. Best just to sit back and enjoy what you've done, enjoy what you've got. So uh, I'm just gonna finish this uh, episode of running some trains around my track. And, uh, and then I'll keep going and, and video it for the, for the next one. So I'll probably break this down into a number of different parts. But thanks very much for watching if you made it to the end. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and to like and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified of my next videos. And uh, hopefully I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for now. Bye.